Hello my trash pandas and welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk about scrap copper. Specifically all the best places to find scrap copper. It's a question I see come up all the time and although I don't want to spoil the, the uh, joy of discovery, some people just want to get to the information. So here it is. I've got a list of maybe nine or ten different places and some of them are things where I find all of my scrap copper. Some of them are better than others but not all of us have huge scrap contacts so there should be something for everybody in here. Let's just get started. Now let's begin where a lot of us probably started scrap collecting. Number one and two are microwave ovens and CRT televisions. Both of these items are on the list because they don't take very long and you'll get about a pound of copper. With the microwave oven, there's a transformer inside that hopefully half of which is going to be copper windings. Sometimes both are copper windings. And then there are a few other little motors and such which are pretty easy to take apart. The CRT television has two good spots for copper. There's the copper wound yoke on the back of the tube, which is easy to get off, but not always easy to separate. And the second source is a degaussing cable which wraps around the tube. Sometimes these are aluminum windings, but when they're not, it's not difficult to strip all of the, the tape off of it and you'll have a good fistful of copper. In fact, a larger television sometimes has two pounds of copper. Maybe don't scrap any really fancy ones though. Some are worth a bit and they're not making any more. Now the third and fourth items are stoves and dryers. The dryer will have a motor, but the point I want to focus on is the 240 volt power cord. I've never seen an aluminum one. And if you've got the ability to strip it, it's another good fistful of copper. Number five, wire. It doesn't have to be this BX cable, any sort of wire. I did a couple videos, I can link those if you want to know what the, what the specific values are, but the bigger, the better. And if you have the ability to strip it, you can get buckets full of copper from stripping copper wire. Just to be as helpful as possible, where are you going to find this? Well, wire is everywhere, but stripping extension cords and power cords from vacuum cleaners is not efficient. I would just sell those as is. Where I find most of my wire, or I find most of my stuff really, is jumping into dumpsters. Construction bins usually have a bunch of chunks of these, but I've found really big cables in dumpsters. It's a numbers game, but if there's construction and you see one of those bins, at some point throughout it being there on the street, somebody's gonna throw a fistful of pretty decent wire into it. Speaking of finding stuff in dumpsters, number six, I just wanna speak on plumbing. Over the last hundred years, most plumbing has always been copper tubing, and as they're switching over to PET and the other plastic tubing, all of these infills and restorations are producing a lot of waste copper pipe that can't be reused. And that's why I like checking those construction dumpsters. If somebody's remodeling a bathroom or a kitchen, chances are they're throwing out something that has a chunk of copper pipe attached to it. And we're not all cruising around hopping into dumpsters. I get that. An extension of plumbing would be off of a hot water heater or just a water heater. These little flex pipes. These come off of water heaters. Every water heater is going to have one. It's just a question of whether the person who uninstalled it left it on. They do sometimes. Now, moving on to something bigger and better. If you've been watching my videos recently, you'll know about these ones. What are we at? Seven? Motors. Small ones, big ones, motors are great sources of copper. As with a lot of these, you gotta make sure they're not aluminum wound, but if they're not, well, a little one like this will have about a half a pound in it. A decent sized one out of, say, a furnace is gonna have about a pound, and motors can get pretty big. Personally, I've found the big heavy ones with the cast iron outer shell are not very efficient to break into and extract the copper from. If you're set up, you got the right tools, absolutely. There's a lot of copper inside, but they are very time consuming to take apart with hand tools. Now, the absolute best source of big piles of copper that I've found in recent history turned out to be transformers. Ah, because if you can get the big chunky ones, they're just loaded with this stuff. There's also lots of little ones around too, because there's one in every single one of these things. Little wall warts. I don't know if these are a good value or worth taking apart. I'm gonna do a video on that really soon. Um, I suspect they're not as far as dollars per hour go, but they're very common. So if you're just trying to fill a bin with copper and you don't care how long it takes, well, there's lots in there. The big ones are a little harder to find, and to be honest, I've only ever found one of them. It was in a large, uninterruptible power supply, or UPS. One of those things that keeps your computer running even if the power goes out in your house. 
size of that one. There you go. That fairly chunky one that I don't feel like picking up again, that's where it came from, a UPS. But these transformers, they transform voltage or wattage. They increase it for high draw devices. So you're going to find them places that use a lot of power. Utility sheds outside of businesses are going to have huge transformers inside them, especially radio, television, and internet broadcast centers. And also high output lighting systems like street lamps, parking lot lamps, or the ones in stadiums and sports fields. Now I'll add roofing copper to the list, but I don't think I'm going to give it a number because the truth is I've only ever found it one time and I don't think it's likely that most people are going to come across it. It's just not that common. Now what are we on? Nine? This one's really common and I guarantee absolutely everybody can find copper here. CPU coolers from laptops or desktops, it doesn't matter. They use copper and they're using less and less these days, but they can't get away with using none. This one here came out of a laptop. It's actually a pretty decent chunk of copper. They really can't get away with not using copper in laptops because they have such tight clearances. Maybe someday they'll be efficient enough, but not now. And then these ones, these heat pipes with a little plate of copper attached, that came out of a CPU cooler from a desktop, and so did these. These little copper stackers. These have good weight, they're solid, and they had aluminum fins all around them, but it was a simple matter to just like hammer those to the side and chop through them so I could pop this out. I probably should have recorded doing that. I didn't think it was gonna come up, but sometimes I do this just for fun or just to get stuff out of the way. Now the final one, number 10, this one's a bit controversial, but there's a right and a wrong way, air conditioners. I have been fortunate enough to come across some big full house unit air conditioners. These are fast, easy, and profitable, and they're loaded with copper pipes. I'll link the video I did before in the description for anyone who's interested. But the controversy, it's very, absolutely, completely illegal to just vent the refrigerant off into the atmosphere. And it doesn't matter what kind of refrigerant it is. Yes, they have cleaner, less damaging ones these days, but the EPA doesn't care. I've got an example here of the ones that I like, because fortunately when these ones are installed or uninstalled, the tech has a responsibility to drain the refrigerant. It's actually valuable, so they get paid for it. They, it doesn't make sense for them to waste it. As far as getting a hold of some, try talking to a local HVAC shop about purchasing their uh, dead ones as scrap. A lot of those guys don't even break them down before taking them to the scrapyard, and that's where the money is. Personally, I choose to avoid scrapping the self-contained portable window unit air conditioners as well as other refrigerant devices like refrigerators, freezers, and water coolers. It's just, it's a preference, it's not a good look. You can check the label and see what kind of refrigerant is in them, but it's not always there or visible. It's just a whole thing. It's a touchy subject and it's not what this video is about, but free venting refrigerant is illegal, harmful, and sketchy. So there's my take on the 10 best places to find scrap copper for free. Like and subscribe for more high quality scrap metal guide videos. And let me know in the comments if there's any other places to find scrap copper that I've missed. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.